Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. Yeah, what are you doing with your hands? <laughs> it was on? holy. You were playing holy oh. sound. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Juliana Caesar, and I'm here with... Priest Vatican at the Vatican. Priest Vatican? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ricky the Robber. <laughs> <laughs> Catwoman. Wow. <laughs> Selena! It's Selena Kyle! It's Selena Kyle in the building! Are you kidding me? We got a celebrity a on the podcast. A literal celebrity. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, am I the asshole for calling my mom when my husband refused to listen to me? Calling, refusing to call Calling me. your mom? Yeah, I called my mom because my husband wasn't listening. To just, like, vent? We'll see. You know, what I think, it's <laughs> always hard, like, like if you're mad at your partner and then you call your parent because and like tell them everything that they did wrong and that you have issues with because you can move on but they, they won't they necessarily yep, move on yep. like they'll mm. still be like oh dude you did xyz like you did you did you know this to my mean? daughter so it's hard like it's hard especially like when they don't like, like circle back too. like it's like oh mom he did this yeah and then Two weeks later, she's still mad because he's like, yeah. he, he did that. And he's, oh, we worked it because out. Because she, actually. like, of course, that other person didn't get to necessarily experience right. that resolution. Mm-hmm. So they're just still r- exactly where they're f- they're going off of exactly what you told them. Right. You know? And that's that's what I think about with friends. Because when you're talking to your friends about your partner, you're usually only telling them the bad stuff. You're yeah. not telling them the good stuff. So you're like... We hate him. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. There might be good things about the partner, but you never, that's not something you discuss because it's not, yeah. it's not juicy. It's not fun to talk about. You're like, you know what he just did? So I'm like, it's funny when people are like, why do my friends hate my partner? Because you, you tell, tell them tell everything them the horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the asshole for calling my mom when my husband refused to listen to me? I, 26 female, recently moved into my first home. I am also four months pregnant with our first baby. The pregnancy has been very hard. I have horrible morning sickness. It really reached a bad point when I passed out and hit my head and my doctor admitted me to the hospital for a week. When I got home, my husband had allowed his brother's family to move in to our two of three bedrooms. They were evicted. I don't know why. One room was my office, was tossed into our room, papers everywhere. The house was a complete wreck, trash, dirty clothes, used diapers. I started to cry. It was like a light flipped and my husband was no longer the same. My husband told me that it wasn't that bad. My reply was, fine, then you should have the house clean before I wake up. Completely exhausted, I fell asleep for four hours. I woke up and went to get a drink of water. I couldn't. Every glass we own is scattered around the house. They didn't clean a single thing. I passive-aggressively started to pick up the dirty dishes and wash them. The following morning, I was trying my best when their kids were crying nonstop, banging on the walls, so on. Their mom was in her room for hours ignoring them. When my husband came home, he was upset with me over how I didn't make his brother's wife feel welcome in our home by helping with their kids when she was tired. Then continued to complain how nothing was done when he was at work all day in the house. Yep, the same one that he didn't clean. This led to a fight where I told him I'm too sick to have company and they need to leave, to which he replied that they're family and he won't kick them out. I started to cry again. I was beyond frustrated, exhausted. I physically couldn't do anymore. I called my mom and asked if I could come stay with her, telling her the whole story in front of my husband, who at this point was in complete shock, angry, and I could tell he wasn't sure what to do. My mom came with my brothers. I have three older brothers. (laughs) Not the brothers coming. (laughs) My Mm. mom, super angry, told my husband, since your family can stay here, so can we. My mom quickly took charge. I was sent to bed. Mm -hmm. My brother started cleaning and complaining loudly about how disgusting my brother-in-law's family is, along with what a horrible husband my husband is for putting me through all of this, as I'm sick. I got a text message from my mother-in-law calling me an asshole for not helping my husband clean up the house and putting my brother-in-law in in an uncomfortable position by having my mom boss him around. Edit to add update. When my mother-in-law showed up, she was super angry outside. I could hear shouting, but I couldn't understand what what was being said. Once inside, she was shocked. My house looked really bad. My brother-in-law lied to her about what happened. My mother-in-law quickly started to help my mom in the bossing mode. My house is not just cleaned, but deep cleaned. My brother-in-law and his kids are now staying with my mother-in-law. 
she didn't know about the eviction. My in-laws helped them financially a couple months ago, and my mother-in-law was not happy about it at all. Sister-in-law refused to come out of the bedroom. She would scream through the door, but that was about it until her family came to pick her up. Last little bit, I did talk to my husband. He seemed very remorseful. I asked for some space. He's staying at a hotel. He asked to come by and talk to me tonight. My mom and dad are here. Both moms felt like I should have someone here when I'm sick. Both moms have set up a meal plan where they trade off on who will bring dinner. It was mother-in-law's idea. Thank you to all your help. I truly appreciate it. There's more updates, but we can talk about it. Oh, my goodness. That is horrific. Okay, it takes a certain amount. Like, it takes a... It just takes a very, like, specialized, horrible person to come into somebody's home that they let you stay in and you and you don't even have enough respect to, like, keep it clean. Destroy mm-hmm. it. You just destroy it as if it's as if it's your own place. And mind you, the wife, she's pregnant. She's sick. The house is a mess. And you as a husband, you can't even clean it. Mm-hmm. You can't even clean it. But then you get an attitude with her later when she doesn't clean the house right. while she's four months pregnant growing your child. And sick. And sick. Wait, wait. Can we start? Can we start? We got to go back one more chapter. Oh, we got to go back. We got to go, we gotta go back, back one more man. chapter. Where are we going back to? She was surprised that they moved in. Oh, <laughs> she I didn't even discuss that with her. I forgot oh, about she that. She came home from the hospital? Because mm, I would... <laughs> Can you father, imagine? father, calm down. Calm you know, down. back in the day, I used to do some things. Yeah. Oh, before, before, that was the old day. Before, yeah, that was the old day. Can you imagine being sick, pregnant, and you come home, and your house is full with baby kids and a mama? Not baby kids. <laughs> I might fall to the floor. My house, my home, Furious. and now my home is tore up from the flow up? Are you serious? Not only people are there, but it is messy, because I'm like... Even just people being there, I'll be mad. But then there's like kids hanging from the roof. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? You're like, what are you? What are y'all doing here? No, imagine coming home and you just see your office in your room, papers oh, yeah. thrown yeah, like, everywhere, scattered everywhere. I think I, that goes you know, I'd be streaming. I couldn't imagine if someone just like just put all my streaming stuff out of order in a different room. I'm like, bro, I got to. <sighs> I was like, your office is in your bedroom. Ooh. It is in my bedroom, but it's nice. So and someone neat in the took corner. the office out of the bedroom. <laughs> and you put it somewhere completely different. <laughs> put a bed there. Yeah. Steph's like I'm sleeping there today, actually. <laughs> and you oh, get man. no support from your husband. Your husband like they're family. They're not leaving. You know how fast I would get on that phone and call my mama, mama. Something needs to be done right now. I would call my mother so fast. I- I probably would call my mother as soon as I walked through that door and <laughs> mama! see, and, and see mama! my house in disarray. Yeah, she waited a day. Did she wait a couple of days before she called her mom? I think she waited like the next day because yeah. that's when he came home with the attitude about cleaning the house. I just feel bad because I read this story and I'm like, I'm exhausted just listening to everything yeah. that she had to deal with. Because like you said, she came home, didn't even realize it. And it's like she's four months pregnant. She just came back from the hospital after hitting her head. She was in there for a week. And her husband has the audacity to be like, it's fine. Like, they're, you know, they're, family. they're just going to stay here, right. their family. And then the next day you wake up still exhausted and he gets, oh, he just like picks a fight with you and gets mad at you because right. you didn't clean. You're like, I cannot clean. I, I should be in bed all day. Literally resting. But I see how the family would, they would justify it to themselves. They're like, we got evicted. Why is she being an asshole? Why is she yelling at us about we're on our down on our luck. Why are we doing? Because I can see them trying to justify this. What? Why they're doing what they're doing? Yeah. But I think it's exactly what Sadia said. It's so disrespectful to come into someone's house. If I'm if I lost my place and I'm like I'm going to some I'm like I'm being as small yeah. as possible. I'm like I won't take up too much room. Like I don't want to bother you. Yep. Like I know like you have your own thing going on. I'm just gonna try and just yep. make it I'm make this as easy I'm as be invisible. easy as possible for <laughs> We're you. We're not even roommates. Yeah, I'm like. Huh? You're barely going to know I live here. You open a cabinet, and I'm like, hey. hey. And I hand you your like food. like eating some tuna. Like, do you need a glass? Yeah, and then you close it, and I'm like, I'll Breakfast stay here. Breakfast is in the fridge. <laughs> Breakfast is in the fridge I'll for you. You just got to heat yeah. it up. Two minutes, Whatever it'll be ready. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. It's chilling in the microwave. All you got to do is hit one. <laughs> just hit one. It'll be ready in about two minutes. They're like, I got to take a shower. I'm like, I'm coming. I'm done. I'm climbing on the shower. I'm done. You're like, no, no, no. I, yeah. I, I can wait a few, yeah. like, ten minutes. You're like, no, no, no. I'm done. Like, I don't even need to go. I'm just coming out right now. You need to get in okay no, 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 it's no, still no, hot it's still no hot problem. for you it's still hot There's i was just warming it up for you <laughs> i'm i'm not freezing no i'm not shivering these are not yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you for letting me stay here. No, my body just naturally does this. I don't know why. <laughs> Super weird. <laughs> okay, so the update. Yeah, let's hear the update. <laughs> Talked with my husband, summed up since the last four hours. It was a hard talk. He's remorseful. Brother-in-law was only supposed to stay for a couple of nights, then leave originally. He thought they would be gone before I got home. Mm, He said he's tired uh, and emotionally upset himself. When I originally passed out, my husband left to help a friend move. He came home and found me. He said he had no idea how long I was on the floor hurt, and he was originally scared that I had died. Since then, he's had nightmares. On top of dealing with his family drama, he admitted to dumping his frustration onto me when it's not my fault. He begged me for another chance. The next steps, we're still separated. He plans on staying at my brother's house in his casita, and we're going to go to marriage counseling and individual counseling. He asked if he could come when the home health nurse comes each night and to my doctor appointments, and I agreed to that. Update on brother-in-law. His wife admitted to having an affair. She told him that she got married too soon and doesn't want the responsibilities of being a mom anymore. I'm not sure that will happen with him and his kids, but I am shocked that she feels this way, especially with her kids. So that was a lady that locked herself up in the room, letting her kids run amok in OP's house. That was such a plot twist. I was Whoa, not ex- she, I got was. A, she got a divorce? She was cheating on him, so I think she wants a divorce. Wow. Because she probably has a boyfriend now. Wait, the sister-in-law or the, the sister-in-law? Oh, the sister-in-law, okay. the one who was the locked, one locking locked. herself oh. in the room while like, her kids were the running The OP was up. like, oh yeah, it's not his baby. That's what I was like, oh my gosh, that's the biggest plot twist ever. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, I'm the villain. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you guys think about her situation with brother-in-law now that he's like, okay, well, this is my side of the story. Do you think that there is still Wait, so stuff this, for reconciliation? Not brother-in-law, yeah, but husband. Okay, husband. Sorry. I Hearing how she explained it, um, usually in those kind of situations where you're clearly in the wrong, it seemed like he had a, like some excuses, like, I've been having nightmares and stuff. I would just be like, hey, I did this. I don't need to like put that extra stuff on top of it. And maybe in the conversation it wasn't like him making excuses, but it seemed like a bunch of excuses. So I could see how it would be hard for her to be like, well, and? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm and pregnant. I, I passed out. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pregnant. Are you kidding me? Like, mm-hmm. you, even him, like, oh, I took it out on you because of all the pressure I was feeling. The person that was making you feel like sad and like all these feelings, you take it out on them? Yeah. I don't know. I'm glad he talked to her, but yeah, I think I think the next steps is what they already are doing, which yeah. is where they're going to individual and marriage counselor counselor therapy, where it's like, listen, even if you do have those reasons, even if they are valid, like I, that still happened to me. You still treated me like that, and right. I still have that feeling and memory of you. And she mentioned how it was like a light switch went off for her husband, just of like a complete 180 of how he was treating her. So I think this probably is the next steps, but I can also understand if she might not be able to get past it, but hopefully she can if that's what she wants to do and be with mm-hmm. her husband. Yeah. I think Sam brought up a point of like, what did you just say? You said something along the lines of like, you're glad he, he talked to her, but it just seems like excuses. But I think the biggest thing is that I, if you're taking it out on somebody, I, I feel like for at least for me, if you take some sort of emotion out on somebody, that's like a clear indicator that you're just in the wrong. Mm. Yeah. Like your emotions, like if you can't communicate them, cool. Just say that in the moment. But you taking actions to let off some of that steam that you're feeling on somebody is not fair. Yeah. Mm. So I agree. it just automatically puts you in the wrong. Mm. I think that um I agree with Sam when you said the thing about excuses, like him just making excuses. I, what I wish I would know is how the conversation went down, because sometimes like sometimes if I was in her position, I would want to know, like, what the hell were you thinking? Like, oh, yeah. what made you act like a, a freaking crazy person that you would be OK with doing X, Y, Z that you did? Sometimes for me, I feel better just knowing, like, literally what the hell were you thinking like what what caused all this not necessarily it being an excuse but being i'm just trying to see where your head was at are you a crazy person or was this something that happened that brought you to this yeah yeah you could just be crazy and i need to know that yeah now yeah i think in the biggest like biggest disagreements too like just yeah just knowing the why is always important because that's how you get the best closure i feel like it's just knowing why someone did something yeah. as opposed to like 
what yeah. was going through your head why did you do it yeah yeah and i feel like he at least he's taking the steps of like hey this is why this is why i did it let's go to individual counseling let's go to marriage counseling to see like where how we move on from this point point. Mm-hmm. and I, I do know there's some people who literally can't handle so much happening mm-hmm. like he he said he brought his brother-in-law and they stayed past what they were doing they were destroying the house and he's like i literally he probably shut down mm-hmm. he's like oh shoot my wife's coming back the house looks crazy i didn't tell her they were coming some people so much stuff happens they just shut down and they don't know what to do and people get people get angry at that they're like you need to do something like i literally don't know what to do so i'm going to shut down and yeah it's not an excuse, but I'm like, there's some people like that. We're like, I literally can't handle all this. Yeah. But I think even after like that next day, like yeah, him still day having was, that frustration, yeah, like Brandon said, taking yeah. it out. I mean, father, pastor, father, what's your name? <laughs> you had a, yeah. you had a, you had a serious Vatican I was going to actually something? ask at the beginning because I didn't hear his name. Really, so. You have a specific I've name. I've been calling priest him Vatican at the Vatican. <laughs> Okay, oh, priest Vatican, Vatican at the Vatican. Vatican. Okay, oh. I missed the. At the I've been Vatican calling you part. father. Yeah, <laughs> Father Vatican works too. As Father Vatican was mentioning <laughs> earlier, basically you were talking about how taking out taking it out on other people, yeah. and he still chose to do that the next day, even after maybe he had time to shut down, to not shut down. But also, I'm not a therapist, so I don't know how long people are in that survival mode where they like, no, I'm shutting down. I'm not interacting with anybody at all. You know, this one comes from r slash creepy encounters and it is, I could have been one of Epstein's victims. Oh, shoot. (laughs) Good Lord. That was shaking to my core, like realizing post that, oh my God, like I was so close to being like those people I see on TV. Mm -hmm. That was shaking me to my core. I'd probably be scared to go anywhere after that. I could have been one of Epstein's victims. I was watching the Jeffrey Epstein doc on Netflix last night and I'm spooked. Literally had a mini panic attack with all the memories flooding in. As I'm laying in bed recognizing a girl's face flash across the screen and I recognize one of his victims as one of my really good childhood friends. I don't know if it belongs Mm. in the subreddit, but here's my story. I lived in South Florida almost all of my life with my crazy controlling parents that wouldn't let me do anything as a kid. No phone calls to friends, no extracurricular activities unless it was academic, couldn't have friends over, and you could forget about me going to anyone's house. Plus, my dad worked at my school during my elementary school years, so I had to be on my best behavior. So when I went to middle school, I was freaking pumped. Finally, some type of freedom and my personality started to shine and making some friends came really easy to me. Fast forward to a year in, I had become really good friends with these two girls. We'll call them Heather and Sharon. They were both really pretty, popular, and friendly, but what fascinated me was that Heather was the only girl in middle school that I knew that was able to sleep over at a boy's house. It was something that was so Mm. foreign to me since my parents told me that I couldn't even go on a date with a boy until I graduated high school or college. They didn't specify. (laughs) Dang, that's late. (laughs) So I automatically thought she was the coolest chick I've ever met. Throughout our friendship, we were known as the tripod. We all had the same classes and lunch periods, so we were all pretty close. (laughs) Over time, Heather would always ask me to hang out with her and Sharon either after school or on the weekends. But with my parents, there was no way in hell. I did attempt multiple times to ask for permission with no success each time not even a maybe i was so bummed because i always felt left out having heather and sharon hanging out without me something i would eventually become grateful for one day while sitting out in a courtyard for lunch heather pulled me aside and asked what i thought about skipping school for one day i instantly freaked and i thought about the automated messages that schools send home with you to let parents know that the you aren't at school. that is so evil that, yeah. whoever invented that i really <laughs> i hope you have a bad day <laughs> <laughs> if my parents ever got that my ass would be toast so i shut the idea down right away kind of laughed it off because there would be no way in hell to pull it off but she literally would not stop asking me so eventually she convinced me and we were ready to start the planning it took us about a week every day during lunch trying to figure out how to pull this off the thrill of it had me so excited as i've never done anything like this The plan was to have my mom drop me off at school as usual and have the girls there waiting for me and we would simply just walk off to the gas station that's near the school and have one of Heather's friends pick us up. Not sure how I planned on dodging the school call, but whatever. Oh, and I forgot to add, Heather made it a point several times to remind me that I need to wear something that would give me an innocent look. I blew this off, but I was already 13 years old. I looked innocent enough. 
Plan goes smoothly and we are walking to the gas station. But as we're walking, Heather's cell phone is blowing up, like constant calls and texts coming through. Each one she answers, just meet us at the gas station like we usually do. At this point, I'm confused because I thought it was supposed to be the tripod hanging out for the day. As we were getting closer to the gas station, I could see like a group of six girls standing there and they're all around my age range, 12 to 14 years mm. old. Some girls I've seen around school, others I didn't recognize, but they all perked up when they see Heather walk up. All of a sudden, Heather yells, who's ready to make some money? And almost all the girls raise their hands and start cheering. I grabbed Sharon and I asked what she was talking about. And the look that Sharon gave me is one that I'll never forget. It was like she was saying, get out now while you can. It just made me very uncomfortable and she never ended up saying anything. It was just weird. A big group of young girls who should be in school just hanging out at a gas station. As we're standing there, two black Lincoln cars pull up and make a sudden stop right in front of us. Heather starts numbering the girls and tells the first group to get in the car. And as they do, the car speeds away. The other one slowly rolls the window down and I see this older man with sunglasses on just sitting there and smiling. He asked if we were ready to go to the mansion, which oh. excites the two other girls standing behind me. He opens the door and they both jump in, followed by Sharon. Heather is standing next to me and nudges me to go on. But as she does, I start going off on her, asking, what the hell is going on? Where are we going? Who is this man? And why didn't she mention this in any of her plans? She looks almost annoyed at me and says, out of all of the girls that I bring, you're the only one that gives me a problem. I thought you would want to get out and finally have some fun. And with your body, you could make a killing. Mm. At the time, I was so naive. I didn't know exactly what she meant by that. But by the tone of her voice and how pressured she was making me feel, I ended up backing away and I yes. ran back to oh, school. Thank oh. you, God. As embarrassed as I felt for bailing on my friends, I feared my mom and her belt a lot more. <laughs> Real. <laughs> Plus, going off into a car with someone I've never met screams stranger danger. I'm so grateful that my parents put that fear in me or else I don't know if I would have made the smart decision. After that, I barely hung out with Heather again. She tried a few more times, but I just got bad vibes from her and cut her off. But I always saw her randomly walk out of school towards the gas station, always with a group of girls. Sharon, on the other hand, she started to spiral into depression slowly. Oh she would only hang out with Heather and would cling to her like a lost puppy. I noticed that she would miss school more frequently until one day she just stopped coming altogether. Years later, I found out she committed suicide. And recently, after oh. watching the doc... I'm convinced she was one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims and Heather was one of his recruiters. Now, Heather was in the same age group. Yeah, but... A, yeah, she was just yeah. a little recruiter. Yeah. The fact that she was like, number off, like, this chick was in charge. Yeah, yeah. she... That's crazy. What I did resonate immediately from the end of that story was she was scared of her parents and her mom and her belt. I'm like... That's got me out of so much trouble because I was scared of what yeah. my mom would do. I mm -hmm. did not do so many things just for that one reason. I'm like, yeah. I probably would have done it if I wasn't scared my mom was going to beat the crap out of me when I got home. Retweet. That is... Not beat the crap. My mom does watch these. She didn't beat the crap out of me. Yeah. But she beat me. She beat me a little. My yeah. mom hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, mom. <laughs> no, that's actually... Because you think about like what happened in that mansion. Mm-hmm. With these 12 to 14 year old uh, girls. Like, that's terrifying. That's terrifying. Uh, I gotta chill. Yeah, sadly, you can kind of assume it. By the way, she was talking about with your body, you'd make a killing. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's a, that's a, let's say 13, that's a 13 year old girl that's talking like that, who's clearly been manipulated into rounding up, like, literally rounding up other girls. Mm hmm. Yeah, how did they get That's Heather crazy. into it? How did Heather become this? What is Heather's story? I mean, like, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. And it for me, like, it 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 makes you not want to have kids because it's like, how do you how would you let them safely navigate mm -hmm. the world? You gotta teach them like she was taught, like, hey, <sighs> well, I don't think the whole violent, like, I'll kill you if you do anything bad, but just like, hey, you need to watch out. You need to be able That's to. That's terrifying. If you feel any weirdness at all, you got to slow down and stop. But she did. And ran in the other way. Because <laughs> uh, I'm like, doing that at 12, 13 years old would be so embarrassing. You're like, why did you run away? I can imagine being so embarrassed running away, but that's so strong to run away like yeah. that. Mm hmm. Peer pressure is heavy. Like, it is so heavy. Like when you get in the moment and you, 
oh, you're just like Ugh, to do it or not yeah. to do it, to do it or not to do it. Like, <sighs> just thankfully, she trusted her all of her instincts, and even her friend Sharon, the one who was like trying to how she thought she was trying to warn her yeah. to be like, hey, you don't want to be a part of this. Yeah, you know. Poor Sharon. Yeah, it really sucks. Because you can only, like we were talking about, you can only assume what happened to Sharon and why she ended up spiraling right. and eventually um, committing suicide, which really sucks. But the thing that I think about, too, is I don't know if, if you guys notice it, but it just seems like as I get older, and this happened with the other with the other generations, but it just seems like as you get older, you see kids that were your age, you're like, I didn't dress like that when I was, you look, yeah. you look really like grown up at your age you're 12 or something so it's even worse to think at their age they probably looked as they're supposed to they look like kids Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which just makes it even more icky of the type of i don't know there's like a type of person you know in this world that really enjoys yes predator that just takes joy and like taking away innocence and like victims yeah Mm -hmm. I didn't even know there was a Jeffrey Epstein doc on Netflix though. Oh yeah. Did you guys is. know about that? Yeah. Is it I haven't seen it. Yeah. But I might watch it. Yeah, I kinda know. wanna watch it. So oh to your point though, like growing up now and seeing the, like those younger kids too, it's like wow, like just that puts so much into perspective. Like growing up and like kids would be wearing whatever we wanted to wear and it's like, oh, we don't see a problem with this, but like being like in this position now as an adult seeing look, I'm like, dude, there's people out there that won't see you the way I see you. They'll see you as a, an object or they'll see you as. Yeah. And so the fact that you're like now at this yeah. age, you're like, oh, don't wear that. I had one of those. Yeah. With uh, yeah. one of my little cousins, like, don't wear that. And I was like, wow, it puts so much into perspective. Mm-hmm. Like I, I remember I would used to be like, I wouldn't be angry because like I'm a guy. I was just like wearing like sports shorts halter to my tops. knees. He was wearing halter tops. And <laughs> <laughs> Crop tops. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> Put your midriff away, Brent. <laughs> Put it away. <laughs> Just tight, tight shorts. Yeah, booty shorts <laughs> all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> My milkshake. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a 13 husky. Car wash, car wash. That boy was thick when he was 13. I was a little chunky. But uh, yeah, just like, I don't know, seeing that too, it's just like, man. And then the way the world is going too, it's yeah. just. I think as a I think as a kid, it's so crazy because like I'm getting to the age where my frontal lobe is almost fully formed. You go, girl. You were formed that frontal. Lobe. I'm really working. Okay, <laughs> uh, um, it's just crazy because like I, when you're a kid, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm old enough. Right. And it's not until you get like my age. I'm in my early twenties. Okay, like don't do too yeah, much. Don't get crazy. But it's like it. It makes you realize how young. You really were exactly. Like, you think you know, and you and don't you even think know you anything. Know, and even you now. don't know anything. And your parents, they tell you this, they tell you this, and I hate it because my mom was right. Because <laughs> I don't think it'll right. ever stop. They usually are. Because at that age, kids, even you know, middle school, teenage, even our age, I'm 26. It's like it's hard for us to be like, uh, I'm. I'm grown. Like, what do you mean I'm not grown? You know, like a 20 year old, a 19 yeah. year old. But then there's, there's obviously older people that are like, no, you have not experienced life yet. There's things <laughs> that have happened. But I, I just want to go back to your point of when you're talking about how you told your niece not to, or your little cousin. cousin, little cousin. Hang niece, niece. Why did I say niece? <laughs> you told your. I'm like, uh, I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> you told your, your little cousin not to dress that way. And I think a lot of people, they might look at it as like, oh, like you're trying to tell me how to dress. Yeah. But there was like a, I, it was a YouTube video or, or some article that I saw and it was from a woman's perspective. And I feel like it kind of makes more sense where she was like, yes, you are allowed to wear whatever you want. You can wear whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But there's so many people out here that if you wear something that might, I might think is not OK, yeah. they're going to visualize you in a certain way. Yeah. So, yes, you can wear whatever you want, but I really don't think you should wear this because there are people, even if you think you're being independent and yes, you are, they're going to they're going to um, not vilify you, but sexualize you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that like as a kid, when you get to when you get told, like, for example, don't wear it like you shouldn't wear that mm-hmm. as a kid, you just receive that as you're trying to take my individualism away. Sure. Like you're trying to take my personality right. away. But there, 
there is such a concept behind that one statement yeah. like you should not wear that mm -hmm. and as a kid you don't realize like everything that comes behind that statement mm -hmm. why i'm saying it why i'm saying what i'm saying and i mean really you can't like you literally you i could i could explain this to a child and they still would right, not right. they wouldn't get it and it's just Oh my God, it's just, it's crazy because it's crazy to think that, you know, there is, we live in this world that can be so dangerous mm -hmm. to like children, to like people that are just susceptible. Um, and it, it just, oh man, it just, it sucks because it, you wish that, you wish so bad that they could s see it. For what it actually is, mm -hmm. but that's only gonna come with time. It's and only it only come comes with, with time. Yeah. It only comes you can't with time. Just tell someone it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the thing that struck me the most in the story was, if you watch cult documentaries and other kind of stuff like that, it's the heather of the situation. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people we see these stranger danger things. You're like, beware of men. Men are the bad guys, or this creepy white guy in a trench coat. Like, yeah. you know not to go with him. But when they get these people who you would normally trust, your these, age, your cool. age, nice, sweet, and you're like, oh, these are cool to someone you look up to. And those are the people who are like really responsible for getting more people into the cold or getting people into these bad situations. And literally no one tells you that it could literally yeah, it be could your be, best friend. Yes, it could be anyone. And that's the even scarier thing. We're always like, we see this evil guy in our head. Like, you know that. That stranger thing in the neighborhood. It's like stranger the, danger. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like, like the, the guy. Cat the trench coat. Yeah, yeah, the cat with a hat. Like, that's what we all picture. Like, I would never get in a van. If that guy rolled up, he's like, get in the van. I would never be like, yeah, if a nice person's like, hey, this is a nice, sweet woman. You're like, hey, can you want to do that? You're like, sure, I'm not in danger. And then, bam. I mean, and in the world today, people have, like, made it their full time job to just become the most conniving, sneaky, just for the most nefarious reasons. And it's really just like, how, how is this happening? Like, how do you, like I was saying earlier, how do you protect your kids when you think that it, it could literally be like anybody? It could be literally anybody. But I think we all do have these feelings where we're like, something's weird. The vibe. Yeah. And some people just ignore it. We're like, I'm not gonna do it. But I think if you have some kind of common sense, you'll be like, yeah, something's weird. And it's up to you whether you're going to follow your intuition or change. Yeah. And like, no, nah, I'm, I'm running away. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> the um, example you, you were giving, though, it reminded me of uh, Men in Black 2. Uh, the scene where uh, Will Smith, he's like shooting at the range. Mm -hmm. And then he shot the little girl. And he's like, why'd you shoot the girl? And he's like, it's 12 o'clock at night and she's walking with biology books and she looks like she's four years old. <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> I'm just like, oh no. It could really be yeah. anybody. It's yeah. anybody. Well, he just knew that that was really creepy, like this next story. Did you oracle that one? Yeah. Oh. I can tell when Maddie gets antsy and she's ready to move on. She has a clear <laughs> <My> phone dot. <dies. laughs> Am I the asshole for calling my friend's girlfriend creepy because she won't stop bringing up my race? Now, when I read this one, I'm just going to tell you right now. I think my perspective <sighs> might be the problem. Because when I read it, I was like, okay, here's my perspective, even before. Yeah. And then, like, as the comments went on, I was like, she, like, basically called out, because you'll see. But she basically, like, called out her friend group, who's all white, and... <laughs> They were defending a certain somebody, and I was just like, wait, that's what I said. And I was like, so I think I'm really going to need all of you guys to give your opinion because it's something that I can't understand. Maddie forgets she's white sometimes. <laughs> she I don't forget that I'm white, but I, st I think what I have to say is valid until like they're like, they literally predict what the white person's going to yeah. say. And I'm like, shoot, that is what I said. <laughs> she's like, darn it. <laughs> Dad Navit. <laughs> Listen here, buddy. <laughs> Listen, newsflash, pal. I wasn't going to say that. Newsflash, pal. <laughs> newsflash. <laughs> okay, so am I the asshole for calling my friend's girlfriend creepy because she won't stop bringing up my race? I, 25 female, have a group of friends, all 24 to 26, eight in total. That includes a guy. I'll call him Nick. Nick has a girlfriend. I'll call her Josie, 24. They've been dating eight to nine months. Nick introduced Josie to the group about six months ago. Both Josie and I are mixed race, with the rest of the group being white. 
Ever since we met Josie, she's made really out-of-pocket comments to or about me concerning racially related things. Things like asking if or why all my friends are white, questions about my mother, African background, comments about how I do my hair, like how I shouldn't straighten it. I always try to steer the conversation away from those topics and laugh it off, but she brings it up so often. Nick says that she's just trying to find a foothold in a friend group, but I don't see why she can't try to get to know me or anyone else in the group as people rather than just bringing up this irrelevant thing that we have in common. I also pointed out to Nick that Josie and I may both be half African, but not the same country in Africa. It's wildly different cultures. Even if I was raised in an African culture, which I wasn't, it wouldn't be one similar to hers. So really it's grasping at straws. And that's to say nothing of the fact that it makes me really uncomfortable. Anyway... Over the weekend, we all had a boat day and we were having lunch. <laughs> boat day. That is, wow. Okay. That's bougie. We were talking about school and I mentioned that one of the schools I went to had predominantly Asian students. Josie asked if there was any black students in my year and I said yes, but I didn't know them very well. She then asked if the reason I wasn't friends with them is because they thought I wasn't black enough. I don't know if it was... If it was that comment or the countless ones before it, but I just felt so angry that she would once again take the conversation that everyone was participating in and make it into a race thing for no reason. I said, no, Josie, that's not why we weren't friends. Frankly, the only person I ever met who was so obsessed with my racial identity is you. And just so you know, it's really creepy. Josie tried to stutter an apology, but I said the only apology I was interested in is it not being brought up again. And my boyfriend jumped in and changed the topic. Nick later took me aside and said that I'd really upset Josie and that she was trying to bond with me. He said she has trauma. He didn't go into detail about her race. And by humiliating her, I made her really uncomfortable. I told him that wasn't my problem and I'm not going to be Josie's emotional support colored friend. And if he wasn't... <laughs> And if he thought I should be, then I wasn't sure what that said about how he views me. Nick is now mad at me for insinuating that he's racist and two friends have taken his side. I don't think I was wrong for wanting Josie to respect me like everyone else, but evidently people think that I was harsh. Was it? Wait, before Maddie, so what did you think originally yeah. going into it? Um, I was thinking maybe she had some trauma when it came to race and she was trying to relate to her about it because they were the only two black people in the group. But then I think she goes on to say something, you know, at the end where she was like, you know, you don't have to just talk to me about being black, black <laughs> yeah. right? You're not her therapist, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not, even if she does have this trauma, which is kind of what I was associating it with, of like, she can talk to anybody else about that. She doesn't need to talk about her trauma with you. She can relate to you with like any, with anything else, like any, like anyone else. So that's what I was thinking where I was like, oh, God dang it, Maddie. Being black is a whole thing. It is. Yeah. And being mixed, I'm not mixed. So like, I don't know. But being mixed is even harder because people see you as white and black. White people see you as black. Black people see you as white. Mm -hmm. So you're like in this mere mixed world where you're constantly being confronted with, am I black enough or am I yeah. representing my race enough? And then to be confronted by someone who's going, who literally has the same experience as you and is going through and like, well, you must not be black and I see you hanging out with white people. You're like, I'm just trying to hang out with my friends. Why so am the I one being that's talking to her is mixed they're as both, well? Yes, yeah. they're, they're both mixed. mixed. They're both mixed. They're both half African. Okay. That's what, that's where I'm like, you know what it feels like to be in this weird, live in this weird yeah. world where people see us this way. And now you're constantly just talking to me about, I don't want to talk about this right now. And her like continuously push it. I can see why... I can see why they're like, oh, yeah, there's a trauma. But like, yeah, that's not my job. Yes. Yeah. I'm not. That ain't my job to like make you feel better. Yeah. If we had bonded and like I did have a friendship, maybe we could talk about those topics. But I don't feel that for you. So I'm not going to talk about that. And that's 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 how I see my life. That's how I'm choosing to live my life. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do anything for you. Because mm -hmm. there are friends where you're like I can talk about some black things with black friends and we're like, we're cool. We can yeah. talk about that stuff. But that doesn't mean all black people. I can't talk about that all black people. Because yeah. we're not all the same. And we don't all think the same. Right. And I think that's what she's saying. Like, I don't think the same as you. Mm -hmm. So why do we don't need to talk about it? I think that there are some mixed people that are... Hmm, uh, are... Seven, 70. <laughs> 
they, <laughs> I get what you're saying. Their <laughs> mannerisms, the way that they are, like they themselves, it's closer toward being like a white person, very mm-hmm. white adjacent. 70%. Yes. <laughs> very white adjacent. And this makes me think about um, how some white people, they are like so inquisitive and just questioning like the black experience right. like what is that what is that like for you like your hair why, why is your what do you use for your hair? and it's like it can be so overbearing that mm. it's like dude what the hell what are you what like where it's almost off-putting and i feel like for the friend to constantly like ask about her experience what it's like just constantly bringing up somehow like race comes into it it's so annoying because one why do i have to why am i the person that you've decided that you know i'm the one that has to educate you Mm. on you know what this is like etc etc and it's like you especially with her being mixed like them both being mixed you are just a part of this experience as i am right and you're and you act like you're far removed from it. It's like, oh, what is it like to be mixed? Is how it comes off. Yeah. When you yourself are mixed. And I've seen a video where it was this person talking and it was like, it was a, they were asking a mixed person, you know, how do you, f- do you feel more white or do you feel more black? And they said, I feel mixed. And I feel like that's completely valid because right. I hear a lot of mixed people, um, white and black, and they, they'll, they'll say, you know, I, you know, I feel too white for black people. I feel too black for white people. And I think that's so valid to be like, I feel mixed. Like, I think yeah. that, I think that is 100% valid. Like, I think that experience is, is in and of itself different from both sides of the spectrum right. because you are quite literally just like in limbo in between both. Right. So I think for her to come to the friend and be like, yeah, what is it like? Like this, that, and the other con- constantly bringing up race it feels super uppity it feels <laughs> like like it feels so it can feel so exhibitory in the fact that it's like at least for me when a white person asks me what is like constantly brings up what mm-hmm. is it like to be black it feels like you're it kind of feels like you're at a zoo and they're yes. on the other side of the glass. I'm yeah. like, hey, what is it like? Like, what yeah. is it like? What are you doing? Like, what is it like to be you? You creature. It, it you feels, thing that's not human. It feels <laughs> so, it feels weird. And it, that's completely different from when someone is genuinely trying to learn about, you know, your race or what is it like to be you. And it doesn't necessarily have to, like, you can find out a lot about a person with just you hanging out with them, with them yep. living their life. And if something comes up, like I've had a friend before, like we just hang out and, you know, they came, my wife friend came over to my house and, you know, we were making food and like we were cooking yams. And she was like, Can I get to the what, is, what is the recipe for this? This is banging. Yeah. Like, and that's completely different right. from when someone is just constantly, constantly, constantly bringing up, oh my God, like, black <laughs> black what is it you know what i mean so. what is it about you what is what? something like? about you like you know. i think my issue is <laughs> um oh man i had it oh no 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 come I back that black. You have it and then you lose it come back, come back. black yeah it was something black it's something about being black um <laughs> ah shoot oh i didn't like how the whole thing was oh yeah like her her racist trauma yeah because i feel like to a certain extent especially black people in america we all have experienced some sort of trauma being black like i had countless times where i've been followed in stores i've had Mm -hmm. countless times where i've been in a room of like literally all white students and i'm just the only black guy i'm like bro didn't we get over this (laughs) like like aren't we all like like you know so it's like or Oh, the worst one. Have oh. you guys experienced this one? Oh. You're reading a book and they drop the N-word. And yes! Everybody in the class looks at you. 
Wait, what that book? That is so embarrassing. Oh, like a uh, Huckleberry Finn. I do remember. We it didn't is, read it. We didn't read it out loud. Actually, my like, uh, teacher it. read it out loud and said it with a hard R. I was like, you yes, he freaking did. Whore. Yeah. Okay, go off. Hard R. That's crazy. Hard R. <laughs> That's so crazy. I never That's understood those funny. people who were like, "Hey, I'm just reading the literature." I'm like, I. Why would you still say that word? Let's let's have some as a context, white person, people. Is there really a need to say that word when they have the the word in front of them? They can understand what everybody it is, in the is reading it out loud. There's in no their need head. for you to say that, especially if there is a black student in the room. How uncomfortable does that make them feel hearing, say, a white teacher say that hard R? And it's like, I don't know if it's necessarily encouraged, but it's like, oh, she said it, so like maybe if I could, we could do like popcorn read. I know this paragraph has the end <laughs> yeah, in it. Maybe yeah. I could read it. <laughs> yeah, everyone's fighting. They're like, I want to read that. <laughs> no, I the like, one dude that just doesn't do anything like, yeah. I'll read. I'll read. The teacher's just like, okay, the black actually, we'll just read the same paragraph over and over again. Everyone reads the paragraph. <laughs> so that so we no one all, feels excluded. Yeah, so we can all say it. And, <laughs> and Brandon, you can start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll look at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. When they like, and everybody looks you know at what? you, that is so embarrassing. It's, it's that or the slavery. The, the slave, sla- slavery, exactly. yeah. So I did have the slavery one. Yeah. So it's like, you see how easy yeah. it is to make a traumatizing experience for a black person. Yeah. You don't use that as a means to try to bond with me. Yeah. That's not. F- that I mean, felt it's bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that, right? Because you're black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had someone in my class that was completely different from what I was. Like, me trying to mesh with them because we're both black didn't make sense yeah and it wouldn't ever make sense right so therefore i just wasn't friends with them and then one of my friends was like well why aren't you friends with them there's so many archetypes of black person yeah he's the only black guy in here i'm like because we don't mesh yeah it's it's not a thing about being black we just aren't compatible as friends Mm -hmm. and yeah i i feel like that's what's going on here like like since she's she's using her race as a personality trait you're mixing i mix let's be buddies yeah yeah and then trying to relate to her on stuff and it's like yo they're two completely different archetypes Mm -hmm. of people you guys just don't mesh like just because she's mixing your mix doesn't mean you guys have to be friends y'all could be cordial cool y'all could be in the same friend group i mean that's exactly what's happening yeah try that with somebody else yeah because no one says that to white people are like Hey, you're white. You're white. Why aren't you guys best friends? Yeah. yeah. White people are like I hate tons of white people. Yeah. Right. Tons of white people. I won't get them. Right. It's it's the exact same thing. Yeah. We're different just as much as white people are different from each other. I'm sorry, I can't get past Brandon's outfit because it's like <sighs> it makes me want to work there. Like, are do you? Can I get an application? Like this next story. Maddie is really carrying us, carrying the transitions today. Yeah, I don't even have my phone anymore. <laughs> Am I the asshole for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad's been canceling his job applications? <laughs> what? 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 So you punished the son? Wait, what? Say that again. Run, 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 run it back. Am run I it. the? Yeah, this is a mom. Am I the asshole for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad's been canceling his job applications? Well, I guess I'll just have to. Oof. And, and Husker's like, you're not moving. And he's like, oh, you're not. So I guess the phone's gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I still got my... my- oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, you can move it. Oh, God. Am I the asshole for moving my son into a rental apartment oh, after yeah. finding out that his dad's yeah. been canceling his job applications? My son, Aiden, 23, moved back in with us upon graduating college as my husband wanted. My husband's original plan was to have Aiden live with us for free, but stay here and help with his disabled younger brother, 16. Mm. Aiden started complaining about needing money and wanting to find a job. My husband was against this and even offered to double his allowance, but Aiden was growing tired of staying at home. So he began looking for jobs here and there for over a year, but none of his job applications came through. He would just apply and they'd never come back to him. We were confused by this until recently. I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being canceled. He'd wait until Aiden applies. Then he proceeds to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. I blew up at him for this, but his justification is that he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aiden and said that Aiden was being a big help and him getting a job will affect his care for his brother. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there until he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. 
My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged and said that I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than his family. He also said that it was a huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it by him. He's been giving me hell about it and calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish and self-centered. He says that I needed to see and understand why he did what he did edit a few things to mention my husband says that since he and i have health issues that we could have used aiden's help Two, when i suggested outside help my husband refused saying he won't ask anything from anybody and that his son is his problem and nobody else's and three i use money from our joint account to pay for the rental apartment my husband said that, that it was wrong and that it was a major waste of money since we deal with medical bills consistently i think it's wrong for his dad to kind of use his son like that yeah put that responsibility on him. like he's the caretaker so right because his son obviously wants to go off and do other things yeah. just mm -hmm. because he wants to go off and do other things go to school get a job does not mean he doesn't care about his family yeah. or his brother right um his dad kind of put him in that role because it benefited his yeah. dad to have him be a caretaker right and I, I thought it was interesting how it was said, how he said, quote, uh, my son, my problem. But yeah. you're putting like the responsibility off to the other son so much so that he can't even do what he wants to do and, you know, live on his own, you know, do kind of do his own thing. Right. So, I mean, it's funny that you say that, but then you your actions are quite literally the complete opposite. If mm -hmm. it was, quote, your son, your problem. Why aren't you the one, you know, staying home and, you know, taking care of him, doing whatever you got to do yep. without having your son step into the role of caretaker? And why would you even be comfortable with him stepping into the role of caretaker, knowing that he is your son that you need to take care of and it's hindering your other son from doing what he wants to do. And now you're making him feel guilty because mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. well, you know, you have to take care of your brother. Like, why would you want to why would you want to go out? Why would you want to go out and live your own life? Why would you want to become and figure out who you are when you have, you know, your brother that you can take care of at, at home? Mm -hmm. No, he's your son. Your child is trying to figure out who he is, trying to become, trying to do what he wants to do. Like any, quite literally any other young person, I'm sure, which is how he felt when he was his age without having the burden of, you know, you have to take care of your younger brother right. and your parents putting that burden or your father, more specifically, putting that burden on him. So shout out to the mom for, you know, giving him the opportunity and the space to grow, mm -hmm. giving him the opportunity and the space to kind of do his own thing, giving him the opportunity and space to not have that. You need to take care of your brother. Like right. you need to you you need to, you need to take care of your brother. Like, and also how manipulative it must have felt for him to be him to be applying for these jobs thinking that he's going to get it and mm -hmm. somehow nothing is working out for him and his dad's just like hey maybe it's meant to be for you to be taking care of aiden like or not aiden but his brother it's just i don't know like so you said I, it's just so manipulative i missed that part because i was watching husker run around right but how did the dad get the applications how did he he had his email address and so he would email the people right them. afterwards so he had his email that's diabolical that is being like that i don't want to apply to this anymore that's so bad i'm selena kyle and i myself you wouldn't, wouldn't do even that. you wouldn't do that <laughs> yeah for shame on that man that yeah. is crazy <laughs> Like that's messed up. It's Can you imagine? And like finding out later, it was your dad your who was dad. the one canceling the applications, so that he could keep you at home. Actually, no. There was a Black Mirror episode where the mom had like implanted the thing in her kid. Like it was a thing that like, oh, well, if your kid's missing, you can find them. Yeah. But you could also like see what they see. See what they what see. They see? Ooh, and that's scary. She, the daughter, had had sex with someone and got pregnant. It could tell that she was pregnant. So she had like got her like plan B pills to kill the baby. Mm. And they're like, and she was getting more and deeper. And then she had like a huge fight with mom. She's like, mom, this is crazy. So I'm like, it's not weird that weird because I'm like some parents, they're going to go to the ends of the earth to protect you yeah, or serve them <laughs> for what yeah. they need. Yeah. But I like that black mirror episode. I was like, Oh my God. I did not God. see that episode. Yeah. That was a crazy one. Yeah. Uh, but, on top of that, though, well, you're saying people go to the ends of the earth, but like, if he's thinking about it from a ten thousand foot view, yeah. that's shooting himself in the foot. Because then now his son doesn't know how to be 
independent, independent in the world yeah. Yeah. and like go out and like find a new job if he doesn't like the one he's stuck at and then like overall like yeah it's just overall it's gonna just screw him over because now he's got like two people to worry about as opposed to if his son were to move out now he's only got one person to worry about mm-hmm. it's like i don't know you, you're screwing o- over the son eventually mm-hmm. I, like in the moment you're helping yourself and your needs and the other son but that in turn will shorten or kind of narrow down the experiences that older son is going to be able to have yeah. because he's like oh i can't get a job yeah like that's yeah, in I mean, the grand scheme of things that's just so dumb that's uh, a dumb move there's people like complaining about their kids who are like in their still in their house they're like in their 30s and they're like why are you acting like this you're like because you babied me you protected me away from things for so long mm-hmm. that i didn't even have the opportunity to grow and then they yeah. just and then they get mad at the kids you're like well what did you do to push them out yeah i think that's 100 percent. like that dynamic is such a breeding ground for resentment yeah because mm-hmm. like that's kind of like that's kind of you're betraying me like i'm trying to get a job and you're intentionally going out of your way to impersonate me That's and tell wild. the person that i'm applying to that oh actually i don't want this job that is so messed up and if i found like if i found out that my dad did that bro don't talk to me for a minute because i gotta process exactly what you were willing to do right. to keep yourself comfortable mm-hmm. so top comment not the asshole your husband is abusive to aiden honestly creepy in his manipulations and insistence on aiden being dobby the hell self dobby <laughs> dobby <laughs> and somebody else said dobby the hell self i just watched that movie where he gets gifted his sock last night the apartment is essentially the sock oh no <laughs> Dobby's free. <laughs> Dobby's a free elf. Dobby likes apartment. Thank you, Harry Potter. Can we talk about the Harry Potter game? I'm on. disappointed with it. What? Was it on PSP? P- PSP. PC. 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 I don't know why I said PSP. It's, it's PC and PlayStation, right? Or just yeah. I think it's PC, PC and PlayStation. I think it's everywhere. No, it's everywhere because my sister got yeah. on Switch. Don't do it. No, no, no! You you can do it. You can do it. It was an enjoyable game, I but think it's somehow fine. it's not. It's kind of lost interest. I don't even know if it's in. I, yeah, I think it's the first. What bit. was wrong with it? I well, I don't know if anything's necessarily wrong. with the it. The thing I want to talk about was their views on poaching. Poaching. Yeah, so we're like protecting all these magical creatures from poachers who are like using them for their skins and stuff and selling them for their own gain. Mm-hmm. But what are you doing? Wait, isn't that how they make potions? Shoot, I was killing We're all We're literally the doing it. We're breeding these animals <laughs> in our own thing. We're selling them off. We're taking all their feathers and stuff. And I'm like, we're poachers. But no, we're just a Hogwarts. So I'm like, we're kind of crazy. We're evil people. But the so game does it's not full address of, like, that. Hypocrites? It's such a hypocritical Hypocritical's? game. Okay. That is true. Because, yeah, as you, like, enter, like, a wolf's den, you do fight them and you do get their skins. And then now, you, you play, you you're playing kids. it on PC. Mm-hmm. Okay. He played it on PC, too, right? I'm not playing on PlayStation. Is it worth it on Switch? My I sister liked it. Yeah, I think my sister got past where I went. I, def- I just need to, like, sit down. I don't know. Is it a $60? It's a, like, it's a $60 game. Yeah. It's not a redundant game, but it's what a, I was doing was redundant. And I kinda, yeah, and I kind of lost interest. You do the interest. same thing over and over again. But I, I wouldn't say that if you got it, you wouldn't enjoy it. I think you wouldn't And I, I don't think the story is as good as, like, a regular Harry Potter story. I think mm. it was kind of boring. I didn't get, I can tell you, I didn't get, I didn't get past it, so. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. Uh-huh. I stopped in the halfway and I was like, I'm out. I have no really? idea. Really? Yeah. I saw it because I saw like some of the gameplay um, and I was like, oh my God, like, yeah. No, that was me. I was like, yes, <laughs> that looks fun. But I was like. It was all a dream. It was all a dream. Wait, was it? Isn't the Get tutorial like super long <laughs> Because that's what I was playing. I think when I, I, yeah, I played on my PC and I was like, dude, this tutorial is like. It's, oh yeah, that first. It took me out of it so like by the really? time I actually got to do what I like wanted to, or not even got to want to do like I I think I don't think I got it out of the tutorial. No, you stopped playing. I stopped playing. I was like I just I can't. There's something Your about drinking this. Under there? Yeah, there's something about <laughs> drinking it. I'm like I have such little vision. <laughs> I feel weird. I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna spill it on me because I can't see it. That mask, you do not have vision in it. <laughs> 
now the world's like opened up to me now that I just pulled it on like. You can see clearly now, now the, the mask is gone. gone. Boop, 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 boop. He, he can, can see make sure he's not stuff. gonna spill on his shirt. Ooh. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> but if he had a coat, he'd have to be careful. Like this next story. Story, story. 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 Like this next story. Story. That was... That was good. One of the best transitions that's been on this show. was Very creative. That was really good. We have to end the show. That's it. <laughs> like, I'm cold. <laughs> yeah. We have to be done right now. That's it. <laughs> so I'm going to read it. the story now. Am I the asshole for taking my niece to court over a coat? Okay, girl, be for real. Uh, girl, was it Michael Kors, Gucci? What was it? Please don't tell me it was from Burlington, because if it was... I'm it's got to be designer. It's got to be designer. Wait, Burlington was like the spot when I was a kid, and then something happened. Okay, my mom, the way my mom would spend literal, literally four hours. <laughs> so it was just me? I was sleeping in the cart. I, we were there for four hours. My mom was picking out a purse for four hours. That's... And my poor soul was sleeping in the cart. Hey, hey, baby. <laughs> Delirious. Like, in the twi- woke up in the twilight. Oh, what are, you, what, what are you doing? What am I still doing here? Yeah, Burlington, four hours minimum. Am I the asshole for taking my niece to court over a coat? I, 28 female, have a niece, 16 female. She's my only sister's only child. Two years ago, I married a very wealthy man, 34 male. So you could have afforded another coat. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And because of the pandemic, last Christmas was my first with the in-laws. My mother-in-law gifted me a coat that is worth more than $20,000. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's just... (laughs) I saw her wearing it and I asked her where she bought it and she said that she would get me one for Christmas. I didn't know how much it was. I knew it was expensive, but I thought maybe 3K at most. I was visiting my <laughs> that's, sister. That's still a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I was visiting my sister last January when my niece saw it. She Googled the brand and showed me how much it really was. I won't lie. I didn't wear it after that because I was afraid of ruining it. Last week, I wore it while visiting my sister. And while I was putting it on to leave, I felt something go splat on my back. And then my niece started cackling and the smell of paint hit me. Oh... I was so pissed off while she was not apologetic at all. Her mom screamed at her and said she was grounded. Then she said she would have to pay for the dry cleaning. While I was in my car, still in shock, by the way, I got an alert that my niece posted a reel. It was of her doing a prank on me. And she said, I'm going to hit my aunt's $20,000 coat with a paint-filled balloon and see how she reacts. I saved it on my phone, sent it to her mom, and told her that a week's grounding is not enough. She did not reply, but I saw that my niece took it down and it got less than five views by then. <laughs> Ratio. <laughs> she had to put that little fact in there. <laughs> said, the next day, I found out my coat could not be saved, so I called my sister and told her that her daughter had to pay it back. Well, we got into an argument and she said that she will not be paying it and if I wanted a new one, then I should get my husband to buy it for me. I think that they should pay it. They can afford to. In my opinion, they should sell my niece's car and pay me back my money. <laughs> <laughs> we did not reach an agreement so i told what? her that i'll be suing and reminded her that i have video evidence that her daughter a no. did it on purpose for online clout and b knew exactly how expensive it was people in my life are not objective at all i have some calling me an asshole and some saying that they are the assholes for not buying me a new one and some are so obsessed with the price of the coat that they're calling me an asshole for simply owning it and wanting a new one so am i the asshole <laughs> she got it as a gift right yeah, she got it yeah. as a gift. Oof. I don't think she's the asshole, but she's being real petty That's... about it. <laughs> she says, sell the car for the coat. It's crazy. <laughs> Are they also rich? They have to be. She said they can afford it. Yeah. They can afford it. Yeah. Oh, girl, oh, then just give them the $20,000. For, $20, know, $20, is a lot of money, especially for yeah. a coat. But the fact that, like, okay, a week's grounding for your child <laughs> intentionally <laughs> ruining someone's $20,000 coat. No, something must be done. <laughs> because of how expensive it is, it's literally just the same thing as 
I took my aunt's car and drove it off a cliff, <laughs> and it, it can't be driven anymore. That's that's the same price of that. Like you drove a car off a cliff and it can't be driven. Yeah, you're paying me back for that. You're buying me another car. You're yeah. buying me another coat. Mm-hmm. I want another coat. Give and you did it on purpose. That's that like the video is funny. something like. must be done. She took her to court. But I mean, if you're gonna take it there, stand ten toes down, and that's exactly what she's doing. So, and you got the proof. You and did. you got the concrete proof, so that you're gonna get your money back. And you better mention how many views she got. So really, got five views. <laughs> yeah, girl, if you're gonna stand ten toes down like that, girl, just keep doing. It. You don't even you don't even gotta worry about if you're the asshole or not. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. The principle of you purposely destroyed a coat yeah. because you thought it'd be cool. Right. There should, like you said, there should be a consequence. And I guess if she is going to sue, then there's that. But there should definitely be some type of consequence where the niece realizes she should never do that ever yeah. again. Right. Yeah. So that's why I hate these prank channels. I hate all these prank things. Oh, they're the worst. Mm-hmm. I don't they're like not. Them. Even, I mean, at that point, that's not even really that's a, prank. a prank. Like you can't come back. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I've seen What's the prank joke. Was, there was like pranks where you're like, oh, I'm going to destroy your car, but they like get a copy of the car. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, those are funny because it's not actually, yeah. ha- it's just the thought of it. No happening. harm was yeah. done. Yeah. But doing it actually, <laughs> that prank guy got shot. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I was like, yes. Yeah. Sure. Like, that's the type of stuff that can happen happy. when you take it too far. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like, thank you because I hate prank channels that need to be erased from yeah. the internet. Yeah. They're so annoying. And then the guy was found not guilty mm-hmm. for shooting it. Yeah, he yeah. got he got off of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, well, he went to jail for shooting in the mall, but yeah, not for shooting him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, no, it's illegal to shoot guns, but you like you. I would have shot the judge. Like, I would have shot, shot him. <laughs> <laughs> so update. Here's a quick update since the situation has been resolved. When my husband got home, I told him what happened and showed him the video. He asked if I spoke with brother-in-law and I said no. All of my conversations were with my sister and he said that he'll take care of it. Now, a disclaimer. Love a man like that. <laughs> I'll take care of it. I understand nothing when it comes to insurance claims and this is what my husband told me slash that I understood. My husband talked with my brother-in-law and told him exactly what happened and showed him the prank video. Then he told him that the coat was insured and will be filing a claim and submitting the video. We might have to file charges for the claim. He assured him that he would be dropping the charges. We do not want to send niece to jail. Then he told him that one of two things might happen. After our insurance pays us, they will come after them. If their insurance pays, their premium will skyrocket. If it doesn't, they might sue them and get a lien on the house. My brother-in-law asked if there was a way that he could pay us without involving insurance, and my husband told him that that's what we wanted to try at first, but that my sister insisted that they will not be paying us back. Apparently, my brother-in-law was not in the know, and he was very pissed at what my niece did and my sister's response. So they came to the solution. My niece's car will be sold, and if it doesn't fetch the whole compensation, she will have to get a job and pay me the whole check until it's paid off. Also, she is grounded yeah. for the rest of the school year. I'm thankful for the people who encouraged me to talk with my husband. Well, game is game. That's Dang, a good the, resolution. The husband was so calm about it. He's like, okay. Does, does coat being do. insured, can you imagine? It you has have to be. a coat that dollars. costs so yeah. much that you have to put insurance on it? That's, that's crazy. Why. I can barely get insurance on my car. Yeah. <laughs> but it's literally the same price. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Good thing they got insurance. Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, because I remember when I was in London, we were watching. Okay, bougie. Yeah, we were watching all these <laughs> London people. London people are so they're so stylish, and they all had you know those long coats, like, trench coats? like yeah. long trench coats. But it's like a it's not a trend. It's like something very. It's like a trench coat. I don't know. Uh, yeah, what it's like a style. long winter coat. Yeah, like a long winter yeah. coat. And I'm just looking. I'm like, all these guys in these coats are like. Y'all over there, oh babes. Oh yeah, over there. Just take a ride. Babes. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting me one of these coats, and I went to they have H and M there, and I found one. I'm like, this is it. It was like, I think 110 dollars, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this coat is great. I'm like, I look so good. This coat is so expensive, and I'm like, but twenty thousand dollars. I'm thinking <laughs> what my head was thinking. I'm looking at this 110 dollar coat. <laughs> Twenty thousand dollars. My mind wouldn't even be able to comprehend. <laughs> but a good like coat. 20, like, are you buying like a car with that yeah, coat? Yeah, like, like I can. I can imagine spending that kind of much money. Being able to. If I was able to, yes, being I would able. Do it. I'm just saying, like being able to, like you see a coat. Okay, just picture this. Yeah. Okay. Picture. Going into a store, right? You're looking for a nice winter coat. 
you see a coat that you really like, you look at the price tag as you do, and you see it's twenty thousand dollars. You go, mm, yeah, not bad, and you buy it. That the price turns me off. And then you get insurance for <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I was gonna say, is this an act out? That it no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Act out. Okay. We act out someone's the girl, someone's the aunt, someone's the mom. Someone's the, someone's the brother-in-law. <laughs> someone's the coat. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the coat. Let me the coat. The, oh, okay. <laughs> the coat's like... <laughs> I, can be the, I can be the sister-in-law. Okay, I'll be the, the niece. You want to be OP? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm a $20,000 coat. Look at me. I'm so luxurious. I'm like so great. I'm just $20,000, you know, plus insurance. So. I, really, I do. I love you. Oh, I love you. It's weird your coat talks to us, right? Yeah. It's so it, it, it was $20,000 for a reason. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to talk. Yeah. I'm $20,000. It's got a personality. It's $20,000. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's it cool. came with the personality. No, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. it came with the personality. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to leave for a second. Hold on. Oh, well, where uh, are you going? Just being twenty thousand dollars. Are you guys going out of the country this year? I'm you bougie. Know, we were you know, thinking I'm about very going pretty to Hey you. guys, okay. yeah. here for yeah. another yeah. video. It's gonna be a prank. Oh, you have to go. You have to go. <laughs> well, I got yeah. this. Boots. I guess you probably get your coat on. I got yeah. this. Yeah. Pink. The twenty thousand dollar coat. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, don't forget what that. happens. I'm twenty thousand dollars. It's so funny. Right it's twenty thousand dollars. Here we go. Okay, now I'm on. I'm a twenty thousand dollar coat. That's. Oh, um, that guy's no. crazy. That's actually really funny because I'm smelling paint. No, it's <laughs> on me. Coat? Yeah, it's on me. It's on, it's, it's the, on what? It's on me. On the, you? The paint. Yeah, I on got the it coat. It. I got it's it on dripping it's on you. It's dripping off of you? It's drying. We got to hurry up or something bad's going to happen. I'm not going to be able to recover from this. Niece, what did you just Please. do? It Please. was a prank. I got it on my. I have ten followers I'm on my fading. TikTok, and I got it all on there. It's gonna skyrocket. Oh. I'm gonna and you know what? Keep that video too, because I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna. It's a special tool that we'll use for later. Yes. Um, okay. You need to take that oh down right now. My Why? And you're grounded for a week. What? You need, you need and to- you're gonna be paying for that dry cleaning of that coat. <sighs> you should have picked a better color. Someone <laughs> needs to. <laughs> who's running my money for the coat? Well, we're gonna get a dry cleaner. This not doing right okay. Here. You know what? Actually, let me call the dry cleaner. Hey Horatio. So Horatio here. <laughs> so my daughter oh my just put God. a um some paints on the twenty thousand dollars. She did what? Valen- I Valentine just kind of want my. They money better only use artesian water to <laughs> drip, like you know. I actually, it was on a, I actually Wait. just want my money. I don't want to uh, give me my money. <laughs> Can it even be dry clean? Hold on, <laughs> please. Is that coat talking in the background? Yeah. Please. We don't do talking coats. Sorry. Oh. Bye. I'm twenty thousand okay. dollars. I'm going where, to talk. So where exactly? So are you giving me my money, or Please. is the niece giving Sis, me my money? Sis, relax. Take okay. me to the hospital. As soon as I get the views on my TikTok, all the money's gonna go to you. You can afford auntie. it. Okay, it's fine. Just buy another coat. We'll ground it's her. It's the principal. Where is the twenty thousand dollars for my coat? <laughs> you know what? We're not going to talk about this. Someone I think we are going to talk about I it. I think you should leave. I don't want to leave. Someone help the coat, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you give me my $20,000, I will walk out this door right Just now. Just bury me in we the We need designer. to have somebody play uh, husband and brother-in-law. I guess I can. Yeah, you got to play the husband. Yeah. And the brother-in-law? Yeah, the both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play the brother-in-law. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need you to leave. I- we'll figure this out later. You're too amped up. I need you to go. Yeah, Auntie. Mm. Hey, you know when you should get in your room. Okay. 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 okay, okay. I'll kill you if I could okay. walk. My mom's being so crazy. Give me that. <laughs> um, I actually would just love to talk to a uh, brother-in-law. You gotta talk to husband. Yeah. Oh, husband is who I yeah. talk to. Yeah, 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 you talk to husband. Oh, that's you. And then husband yeah. talks to brother in law. Okay, husband. Let me just tell you something real quick. Okay. Um, this funky little niece. <laughs> She just ruined my twenty thousand dollar coat by splashing paint on it. Yeah, um, and if you if you're having trouble believing it, here's the video. Word for word, bar for bar, in twenty and in four K. I'll handle it. Okay, that, that's great. Yeah, you do that. Uh, excuse me, sir. We we need to have a conversation. Hey, uh, what's going on? <laughs> you're so big. <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> so your daughter decided to uh-huh. do a prank on the hopes of going viral. Yeah, Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Uh, it resulted in my 
wives? Twenty thousand dollar coat. Ruined. Being ruined. Sorry. Twenty thousand dollars. He said. Yeah, yeah, you get me. You get me. You get why she could be pretty angry. So, um, pretty much, I have an insurance policy for it. Okay. Cool. Then we're good. Uh, let's get out of here. Good but conversation. Basically, you're gonna have to pay that premium. You know what I mean? So, like, that's on you. Figure that you're out. You're right. You're right. You're right. We you're right. were trying to do it like very cordially. I can't take you to court. <laughs> I'll just throw that in there. Yeah. I can take you to. I can. I can uh, throw your niece in jail. We got the proof too. She didn't even get past five views. Because if, if we want to take, if we want to take it there, if we want to uh, take, my it, daughter we can take can it get there. Views this, if she really the views to. are getting. Don't ever talk about my daughter's views. My don't daughter ever gets talk views. about our daughter's views. Our daughter gets views. Okay. So how dare you? I need to get my money. And also, honey, why didn't you tell me about this? Huh? Why didn't you tell me about any of this? <laughs> well, you know, it's just. It's just a silly thing. I Twenty thousand dollars is not silly. Well, they can afford it. <laughs> We're so already in debt right now. I. It was only a little shopping habit. We're not that much in debt. We're Me in being debt. a twenty thousand dollar coat, you will coats, be. You will so be sued. You, you will be sued. Bought a hundred cans of paint. That's for even why our daughter has it because we have so much paint out. We need to do renovations on so the much, house. A okay. hundred cans of paint. We don't need that much cans of paint. We can always donate and give it to somebody. I, so. Okay, I got to get out of this. But first. We'll get you your money. Yeah. I promise you. Facts. Uh, niece or daughter, our daughter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're selling your car. You know what? No. I'm, no, no we're selling the no. car. No. What did your father just say? I, I think he said he's going to sell a car. Yeah. Y'all better oh. sell that car. I'm worth more than your car. <laughs> because if you do not, your aunt is going to jump you. I will. And don't and don't think Honestly, I'm above it. I'm scared of both my uncle and my aunt. Do you aunt. see They're my bloody people. nose? You see Wait, my change of attitude? She punched me in the face. Wait, where did she do that? I oh, did. Actually, I see her face that she definitely... Mm. Her knuckles are bloody right now, Mom. Yeah. I know, my, there's blood. Got, yeah. So you need to listen to your mom. She's not going to hit me, right? She will hit you. I'm not you above it. You need to sell it. your car. Oh my God. I'm, I'm not your, above it. I'm your niece. Listen to the code. I need a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and and scene. scene. Yeah. Very good. That was stupid. <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed being an inanimate object. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> and now Sadia's talking to it. Is there something on you? There's something on me. <laughs> I'm dripping. I'm surprised you didn't have to do like any awkward poses like this next story. Yes. Maddie. Yes. She is rolling. I don't She's have LeBron. my phone, so I'm like, I forgot all the... She's LeBron on the cash. She's dragging him. <laughs> She's dragging him forward. Come on, we're finishing this episode. We're going to finish this episode. Am I the asshole for doing weird slash awkward poses whenever my mother-in-law accidentally walks in on me in the bathroom? <laughs> Why is your mother-in-law doing that? Right. <laughs> That's One like time, two measure. times, and after that. <laughs> Why is she doing that? That's weird. It's true, though. More than three times, it's not an accident. Yeah. It's you're, not you're an accident after that. In. She's trying to see something. She's trying to see something. Because at that point, do you just show like the most vulnerable part of your body just to like have her be scarred so she never comes in? I or mean, if she's doing You're just that. like bent over. I'm like, bent over open. <laughs> 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 you trying to see? Let's see then. <laughs> bent over spread. Yeah, spread eagle. Spread eagle. Spread. <laughs> A full spread. Yeah. Am I the asshole for doing weird slash awkward poses whenever my mother-in-law accidentally walks in on me in the bathroom? So my mother-in-law, I'm a gal by the way, came to stay with us for a few weeks till her home is renovated for Christmas. The problem is that she's been randomly walking in on me while I'm in the bathroom. Thankfully not once has she seen me naked because I started picking up on her behavior after the second time in a week. She'd barge in and then turn around and say, oh, sorry, and then close the door. I tried talking to my husband about it, but he kept ignoring me, then flat out said, so what if she accidentally seen you naked? She's family. He seriously <laughs> said that. We have a lot. <laughs> Wait, was that in yeah, there? Yeah, was that in the story? Or <laughs> was that, that in there? <laughs> He, he seriously yeah he no seriously she said that said oh. we have a lock and i could have used it but i have past trauma from the idea of locking or being locked into a room after my brother locked me in a room when i was five so i came up with this idea i go inside the bathroom pretend to use it wait for her to come because honestly it's deliberate at this point when she accidentally barges in she'd see me in a weird awkward position for example doing a ballet stand standing up on the toilet or standing facing the wall with my hands up fully clothed of course <laughs> <laughs> 
I could see how awkward and weird this would be for her because she'd stand there for a few seconds trying to figure out what I was doing. It was hilarious at first seeing her initial confusion, but she told my husband about it, claiming she caught me in practicing rituals in the bathroom. Oh my God. I cleared things up and revealed the reason why. My husband was livid. He called me childish and said that I made his mom feel terrified slash weirded out by my behavior. He said that I should have just acted maturely and locked the damn door instead of playing mind games. Edit. LOL, um, I just came back and saw literally thousands of people. Oh my God, now I feel embarrassed. Glad I went anonymous, LOL. But seriously, I'm looking at my screen and I'm like, I'm famous? Seriously, though. <laughs> my husband no, and his mom are extremely upset with me. He thinks that it was ridiculous and demanded an apology before she goes back to her home. I'm not sure if I'll apologize because yes, while it was a me problem that I couldn't use the lock, it still feels wrong that what she did, and maybe I'm wrong too, but at least I feel like I got a bit of a chuckle out of it. Also, I'm sure Thanksgiving dinner will be hella awkward tomorrow, especially after what happened. What is with all these stories blaming the victim? Right. Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to knock on the door before you enter? Seriously, especially after not you're like, hard. it's happened before where you're like, oh, I actually walked in on like, her. And you know that it's happened before, like to the point where she's just, she's literally setting it all up for her too. Just barge in the door. She knows it's going to happen. That's She knows. 100% she knows it's going to happen. She can plan it. So she's doing it on purpose. So if the door is closed, do you guys, do you, if the door is closed, the bathroom door in your house is closed, do you guys knock? I yes. Because usually it's left open if it's open. I always, I live alone and I knock on the door if the door is closed. The <laughs> ghost is like, I'm busy. He's like, oh, you know, it's cool, Toby. Just let me know. <laughs> That's great. I mean, it is. It takes nothing to knock, like right. right. But instead, you just rather keep invading someone's privacy. I'm really surprised the husband is like, "Why yeah. did you do that to my mom?" He's and she, what boy. she was doing was harmless. Yeah, she wasn't. She wasn't spread eagle yeah. to the mom. That's she what was, I would have done. I would have been. <laughs> I would have traumatized the mom for <laughs> what she was seeing. Like that is ugh. Yeah. Here's what I think is happening. I think the mom finally getting in touch with her side that's attracted to women. She doesn't know how to express it. So she's sneaking in on the trying to... Attraction of women, have you acting up? Trying okay? to catch a glimpse. She's trying to catch a glimpse. She's like, I ain't had nothing. I've been with... I just want to see. I've been with the, his dad my whole life, and I just want to just catch she a glimpse. She just wants to take a gander. Yeah, she's like, let me just get a look. Yeah. Because she's like, she never saw her naked. I'm like, she just wants to see her that one time. She's like, if I keep doing that, eventually I'm going to... Uh, I'll hit it one Eventually I'm going to catch this girl <laughs> I'm gonna naked. Catch it. But really, though, why do we think she's doing that? Do you think she's trying to, like, embarrass the daughter-in-law? I don't get what... Or is it, like, a I don't know thing? what the end game There's is no at. Maybe it's, like, a power play, kind of, like... That's why I kind of think my thing is actually real. Because that's the only real reason why I think anyone would try to do it. Mm. To keep trying to sneak in. In my own house, no less. Yeah. If you don't knock on this damn door, <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Just knock. That's Just it. knock. Clink, clink. That's it. Because it feels like it's the... like a weird manipulative thing where she's like, "This will teach you to lock your door." Maybe. No, because I feel Maybe. like she would have said it yeah. if it was. I think it might be a power move, like make you uncomfortable in your own home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the real woman in his life that he'll listen to, not you. Yeah. No, but that is true. Yeah. She, yeah. And you know, it works. mother-in-laws can act like <laughs> that, for real. Because you can't just box your mother-in-law. Mm. Or can you? <laughs> I'd do whatever need to be called for. Oh. Ah. You would box a mother-in-law? If the situation called for it. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't. I would <laughs> <laughs> Claudia's just watching this like yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually could see Sadia boxing a mother in law. You know, running the face. The right circumstances happen. I I have I have a tattoo of a scale. I'm very pro justice. Mm -hmm. So if it's fair You catch these hands, it's, it's fair. Just <laughs> and if I if it has to be by my hands. <laughs> if it has to be by my hands, so be it, damn it. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> <laughs>